Hey guys, welcome back. Do you like winters? Well, who doesn't like sipping hot chocolate while snuggled up in a warm blanket? The chilly winds are very enjoyable, especially while wearing wind cheaters and warm jackets. But have you ever noticed how we get cold as we come across cold winds? You would have experienced that although the rest of our body is warm, our nose and fingers still feel cold. What could be the reason behind this? The reason is that our protruding body parts like our nose and particularly the nasal passage act as a heat exchanger that helps in heat dissipation. This is the exact phenomenon applied in dissipating heat from machine components ranging from heat sinks in computers, radiators in spacecraft to automobile radiators. A general function of a heat exchanger is to transfer heat from one medium to another one. The simplest type of heat exchanger is called as a double pipe heat exchanger which has two concentric tubes. The inner tube has a hot fluid while the outer one has a cold fluid running through it. Furthermore, the fluid direction can be different in three ways, thus giving rise to three primary classifications of a heat exchanger. A parallel flow heat exchanger has fluids entering from one end, traveling parallel in the same direction and then exiting from the other end. The other type is a counter flow heat exchanger. In this type, two fluids enter from the opposite ends, flow in the opposite direction and finally exit from the opposite ends. Counter flow heat exchangers have one advantage over parallel flow type, that being the average temperature difference is higher thus resulting in a much more efficient heat transfer. The third type has the fluid flow in a perpendicular direction to each other. This type is called the cross flow heat exchanger. In such types, the flow of one fluid is in the x direction while the other fluid flows in the y direction. This type of heat exchanger can have fins to facilitate the flow in one direction while the tubes carry the other fluid. To maximize the efficiency of heat exchangers, the contact between the hot and the cold fluids should be maximum. For this, heat exchangers are designed to have large surface areas. The double pipe heat exchangers that we discussed are easy in construction and maintenance. For this reason, they can be used for small scale applications, but they have low efficiency and take up a lot of space. Therefore, more efficient types of heat exchangers are introduced. Starting with the shell and the tube heat exchangers. This type consists of a large pressure vessel, also known as shell, with a series of tubes inside it. These tubes are called a tube bundle. One fluid flows through the tubes while the other fluid flows outside the tubes but inside the shell. The tubes inside the shell can be either straight, making up a straight tube heat exchanger, otherwise the tubes can be in U shape thus making up a U type heat exchanger. Shell and tube type heat exchangers are most commonly used in oil refineries. Generally, they are used in high pressure applications like steam generators of nuclear power plants. They are also used as surface condensers in steam driven turbines. The next type of heat exchanger is the plate type. As the name suggests, a plate type heat exchanger has plates instead of a tube arrangement. These plates are arranged alternatively as the hot and the cold fluid pass through them. Due to the large surface area of the plates, the heat transfer is more efficient than the shell and tube type heat exchanger. The large surface area also increases the speed of heat transfer between the two plates. The plate heat exchanger is usually applied in low and medium pressure applications, but for high pressure applications, welded plate heat exchangers are used. Moving on, the next type is the helical coil heat exchanger. As we have seen earlier, the double pipe heat exchangers are simple in design but not very efficient. Also, the size of shell and tube heat exchangers can be a problem for limited spaces. The solution to the problem of limited space can be derived from our DNA. And we're not joking. The DNA strand in itself is very long. To pack such a long strand effectively, the strand coils itself in a helical pattern called a double helix, thus using up the available space much more effectively. Similarly, the helical coil heat exchangers use up space very effectively. The coiled tube carrying the liquid is placed in a shell that carries another liquid. Moreover, when the flow rate is low, the efficiency of shell and tube type heat exchangers is decreased. But this is not the case with helical coil heat exchangers. The cleaning of helical coil heat exchangers can be difficult as compared to straight shell and tube type. But at the same time, helical coil heat exchangers require cleaning less often. 
These exchanges are most widely used in liquid metal fast breeder reactors. Now suppose if we wanted to change the shell of the helical coil heat exchanger with another coil such that the fluid flow in both the tubes is parallel to each other. This arrangement is called spiral heat exchangers. They can be placed on a flat surface such that both the channels have a long curved path. This arrangement results in a very efficient use of space. Spiral heat exchangers are comparatively smaller in size than other types and are used in applications like pasteurization and preheating. The design of heat exchangers can be varied according to the application, thus giving rise to various other types of heat exchangers. For example, a plate fin heat exchanger has fins to increase the efficiency of the unit. They have a high heat transfer efficiency and can withstand high pressure as well. As a result, they are used in aircraft engines. Another type is a pillow plate heat exchanger in which two thin metal sheets are spot welded at regular intervals such that there is a space left between the sheets where the fluid can flow. They can be used as an outer covering of tanks for cooling milk. By finite element analysis, it is observed that these types of heat exchangers have a favorable heat transfer rate. Besides, they have great geometrical flexibility as well. And are you interested in how finite element analysis of such components is done? We have comprehensive courses which explain how FEA is performed. We even have courses on CFD which is computational fluid dynamics and MBD multi-body dynamics. We've added the link to our website in the description box below. Don't forget to check it out. Well, that's it for this video guys. Stay tuned for more amazing content and until next time, bye.